and on our court stuff. There's a check and balance until we can abolish those courts. But again, it goes back to, again, abuse of power or, or as you said, a leadership that's not fulfilling those obligations. The county college did give us check and balance. Okay, well, let's, and I, but my question right. is, and the main reason that, um, my question really has to do with something about FICA and what's in the CONCON -con and what's not in the CONCON. -con. There's no such thing as a CONCON -con on the, no, the constitutional so convention. It's not a constitutional five. convention, so let's, we're, right. gonna, we're gonna talk about, let's use correct terminology. Okay, Article 5. Yeah, an Article 5 convention. All right, one of the main reasons the states have lost power is, first of all, the FICA, the federal income tax, where basically the federal government's been allowed to reach across sovereign state lines into the pockets of citizens of sovereign states, thereby effectively taking the power away from the states to choose what they'll fund and won't they fund at the federal level? Is there any article, are there any amendments in your Article 5 convention that will address this? Okay. Let's start with your premise and then we'll go to your question. The premise is that they could abolish the federal, the lower federal courts. They could. But who's they? Congress. Congress is never going to take away the power of the federal courts. So any power check and balance that exists in Washington, D.C. is no check and balance at all. So now on to your question. FICA didn't start the direct taxation of the people. It, it, it's an abuse, it's, it's, it's worse, it's more egregious. Day one of the Constitution, the federal government could directly tax the people. That'd be a portion, uh, but the, that was one of the big changes between the Articles of Confederation, where the states had to descend in contributions uh, versus the, article of the Constitution where the federal government could directly tax the people. It's gotten worse over time, but the power of direct taxation was given in the Constitution itself. Now, as to the fix, the, what I want to do, my proposal would be for this, is you put in a, a sunset period, perhaps it's five years. Five years after the amendment is ratified, all federal taxes are repealed, all of them. And then you put in a rule that requires a supermajority to vote in any new tax of any form. And if it's my my preference would be two-thirds majority, because like the founding fathers, good structure leads to good decisions. And if you require a two-thirds majority in Congress to impose any tax of any kind, and all the existing taxes are gone. And and at the same time, we've taken away their spending authority so they can't be spending on education, on welfare, on Social Security, on Medicare, on Medicaid, on Obamacare. All that spending authority has been taken away from them. Then, and you put that tax rule in, we're going to have a lean, we're, the federal government's going to be anorexic. Um, and so <laughs> that's, that's the point. Or you keep those taxes inside the states and the states control the money and that way they can control the Fed basically with the purse strings, and like I said, if you have 50 states, that is just one more weapon that the states can use to keep the Fed from getting too big and too large. Well, first of all, if you're really talking about the Fed being the federal bank, I, I'd like to... No, I'm talking about the federal government. Okay, all right. Well, the, the, by the way, just as an aside, I would like an amendment with one sentence that says, the monetary system in the United States has to be owned by the government, not by a private bank. But, um, just... just um, but... I don't want, the answer is no, because I don't want California defunding our military. Uh, uh, I want to take away their ability to spend money on domestic policy. And if they're only spending, you know, 90% of the budget, if, if, if the plan that I'm, I'm uh, advancing is adopted, 90% of the federal government is going to be on the military foreign policy. It's going to be, it's going to be the domestic budget, I mean the patent office, the FAA, and a half NASA, and a handful of things like that, very limited. And so it is not appropriate for California to decide whether to fund our military. It is not appropriate for Massachusetts to decide whether to fund our military. We need to have the ability to do what the nation needs to do, and we ought not to sit into the mindset, because the mindset that the state should control the federal spending is conceding to the federal government jurisdiction over domestic issues. And we don't want to give them jurisdiction over domestic issues. We want to have a nice, hermetically sealed package where they can't deal with domestic issues. And I don't want the leftists to be able to defund the military of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Great. I'd like to ask a question. Um, 
Everybody's familiar with George Soros. Um, Everybody's familiar with George Soros. Soros. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He fund he campaigns a lot of fun. Uh, he's funding the campaign for a same Article Five convention that's being promoted by Mark Levin and the Crow book. You know, he's always on the book. Sir, can I stop anyway, you? Can I ask you Wolf Pack for that? Wait, I'm asking a question. Okay. Wolf, Wolf Pack and other liberal groups supporting the Constitution Convention 